archaeologists, it's a challenge to track down all the historical evidence in the time available. And that's what's brought us to Saltic Bay near Whitby. For centuries, the plentiful waters off the Yorkshire coast have sustained a thriving fishing industry. But fishing the North Sea brings risks as well as rewards. Crikey. This is a mess, isn't it? What is it? A, bit, I mean, a, a boat? Yes. This is presumably the engine. That looks like the propeller shaft. So that would be the back end of the vessel, the stern. That would be in the middle of the vessel, so we've lost the entire starboard side. That's been just sheared That's off. That's a big engine. It's a big engine. So quite a big boat. I mean, what kind of... Do, you know, do we know anything about it at all? We do know a little bit, yeah. This is the wreck of the Admiral Van Tromp, um, which wrecked in 1976. But there's a bit of mystery about how and why it wrecked here. Maybe it's 1976. What's the mystery? Well, there's not really ever been any explanation as to how it ended up so far off course. It was actually headed out way into the North Sea on a fishing trip, um, but ended up wrecking here at Whitby. It left from Scarborough, ended up wrecking way off course. Yeah, I don't, I don't imagine that it wrecked here. I feel like, because this is, I mean, it, to have come in this far seems pretty unlikely. It's really shallow around here. So I'd, I'd be surprised if this was where it ran aground. Mm. It's all broken up. I wonder if it actually wrecked out there and somehow has ended up here. Where it wrecked is the mystery. Skipper Frank Tarl and the other two surviving crewmen had to give evidence to an inquest. Did any of them discover what had gone wrong after they hit Black Nab in the middle of the night? Right, this is a statement of Frank Tarl himself. And if anyone has got the answers... It should be Frank. It should be Frank, so... I was awoken at 3am, so we're getting into the events of the evening. I went straight into the wheelhouse, but could see nothing but thick fog. John Addison was standing in the wheelhouse, gripping tight to the chart table. I said to him, what the hell are we doing here? We are ashore. He never replied, but just stared at me. I had to force my way past him to get to the radio. He seemed petrified with fear or shock. So he's frozen up? He's frozen up. And here, there's another little statement here. I had to put John Addison's life jacket on as he was not able to. So even with the threat to his life, he's not able to act for himself. They're in the wheelhouse and they've you know, suddenly got water up to their chest. The water's coming in. I told John Addison to go out of the wheelhouse as I was afraid that she was going to turn turtle. I guess that means capsize, capsize yeah, yeah. yeah. He would not go out and I could not get him out. He's still frozen. I think this last paragraph is, is kind of unfortunate. It sums it up. I can give no explanation as to how this shipwreck came about. There had been no drinking on the boat, and John Addison was an experienced seaman who had been at sea all his life. For some reason, they came wildly off course and ended up ashore. It just seems like it's going to remain a mystery. It is a mystery, isn't it? There is no answer. The only person who knows what happened on that night was John Addison, and he never made it off the boat. The inquest concluded that any precise explanation for the fate of the Van Tromp was lost at sea with the boat and John Addison. We know that something happened to put Addison into such a state of shock that he couldn't even save himself. What we can never know is what caused the boat to veer so dramatically off course.